Hey guys, Nico Everest here. Um, today I'm going to show you how I created this painting of Point Addis, which is on the Victorian coastline. Uh, the reference image for this photo was captured with my drone after a hike. Um, in this video, we're going to go through the whole process of creating this piece, but I've also broken down um, each step into a separate video so you can learn um, the steps in a little bit more detail. Um, so in other videos, I go through how to create um, waves like this that haven't broken, how to create depth in the ocean like this section, how to create shadows, and also um, a video on painting rock faces and shrubs. So if you are interested in learning any of those um, specific sections, then please check out my YouTube channel and have a look at those videos. Uh, okay, so firstly, let's go through the materials I used for this painting and then let's get started. Okay guys, so to start our piece, I'm just uh, sketching out the image with my grey lead and a ruler for the horizon line. Uh, I know this image isn't showing up very well on the screen, so what I'll do is I'll pop up a template of the outline so that you guys can easily copy it onto your own canvas. And then basically how we start is just blocking out um, each section, um, the colour in each section. So to do the sky colour, I really like this light blue um, grey colour, which I mix up with phthalo blue, copper and a little bit of white. And then once that's done, I'm going to be blocking out the ocean colour. So using Mars Black, Yellow Deep and the Thalo Blue for the darker ocean colours. So for this painting, I'm going to, as I've, because I've broken down the different sections of the paintings into mini videos, we're going to work on the ocean first. So in the template, I'm going to mark down which sections are the darker sections. And then simply by adding a little bit of the titanium white, um, we can get the lighter blue sections or the lighter blue colour to blend in. Um, as you can see here, I'm leaving the white line of where the waves are visible. And that's just so that it's easier for me to mark out a bit later where the, dark, uh, where the top of the wave is going to be. As I'm going, I'm just gently um, fanning the brush over the surface of the canvas in the movement of the way that I want the wave to go. I like to do this even when I'm you know, adding the underlayer because it just starts adding the texture from the get-go and then later on in the painting, if any of these colours are shining through, then it all still has that same movement, which I think is really helpful. Uh, the underlayer here is actually a really thin layer, so it may look like it's going on quite thick, but it's quite thin. Especially for the water section, I like to keep it as smooth as possible when I'm working on the other sections such as the rock faces and the bushland. Um, I'm quite happy for it to be textured, but with the ocean, the first layer is quite thin. So once all of the ocean colour is blocked out, I then start to add the top of the waves with a darker blue colour. So this is just where the waves are rolling over, so these waves are actually not breaking. And how I achieve this is I mark out the top with the dark blue, and then I actually use my brush to, while the um, acrylic paint is still wet, to brush down and then across with the dark colour, so blending that through the lighter colour. Um, this just gives the um, feeling of movement of that wave. And then what I like to do is make sure that, that behind that wave there's texture as well. So just here I'm mixing up a, a little bit of a lighter colour um, to then start blending in behind that wave so the water looks like it's brushing up to that wave. Down um, in the bottom portion of that wave, I'm actually going to drag that paint over the top so it looks like the, the water's rolling over the top of that wave, um, but further to the right of that wave, um, I'm leaving it very sharp as if it, it's sort of just about to, to crash, but it's not, go, it's not going to quite yet. And then I just continue that process 
through all of the waves. So adding that dark colour at the top and then dragging it down and through the other colours that we've popped down as the base and then sort of blending that through. So really it's just a down and then across movement and then as I go I'm sort of sometimes pressing quite hard on the canvas and then sometimes just feathering lightly across. And I should say that there is a little bit of water on my brush so that's to try and make the acrylic paint nice and easy to spread. So it's not quite dry brushing, there is a little bit of moisture on my brush at this stage. Now if you'd like to see a more detailed video of how to create these waves and the paint, the stro paint strokes in real time, um, I will be putting up a video of each section of this painting and creating these waves is one of them. So just head on over to my YouTube channel um, and you should find the video there of more, more detail of how to create these waves. As you can see here, waves that are closer to the shore, they're a little bit greener and that's because the water is shallower and the sand is shining through. Just make sure that each time you are, um, if you're wanting to keep the movement of the wave, just keep your brush going in the direction of the, where the wave would be going. So moving downwards and then upwards to create that feeling of movement. And as you can see here, um, I use my spray bottle just to keep moistening down the palette so that it keeps the acrylic paint nice and workable. And then from here with these waves, I'm just going through and building up the layers of lights and darks, still using that same motion. So doing a layer of a lighter blue colour and then on top of that adding some darker blue just to create, really create that feeling of, of movement in the, in the water. Just while I'm continuing to add those layers, uh, I'll let you guys know about the reference photo for this piece. We have a beautiful Victorian coastline. Um, the water is usually a very deep, dark blue um, like scene here and has a lot of greens through it as well. The image was taken, um, an aerial image with my drone that I fly up over the coastline to get these reference views and I love creating from uh, pieces from these angles because they're often not seen by the public. I mean we stand on the beach and we look out to the water but not often do we get to look back down at the landscape. And as you can see guys, when I'm wanting the water to be rushing over the wave from front to back, I'm simply just carrying the paint in sort of a, a soft semi-circle motion over the top of that wave. Um, and then if I'm wanting the wave's edge to be more sharp, like further in the distance, then I'm just carrying the paint up to that line, um, but not, uh, but a little bit lower, so it's not actually meeting the top of that line. Another um, video that I've created about this piece is actually um, how to add the depth to this green section of the water and how to dry brush and then acrylic wash over the top to really give that section depth and so that it looks like that you're seeing through the water. So if you're interested in that then yeah please head over to my YouTube channel to watch the video of how to add more depth to the water in more detail.
now to start uh, blending the water into the sand. I've created a sand palette just with white, uh, metallic gold and a little bit of metallic copper. Uh, and I'm just going to block out where the sand is and then we can start um, blending in the edge of the water in with the sand. Um, as the water is rushing over the sand it turns into a much lighter greeny um, sandy colour. Um, so it's important to try and blend that in so that you're, you're getting that effect that the, the water is sort of rushing in over the sand. And as you can see here, I'm actually just marking out where the, the shadow of the cliff is going to be. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of just leave that section for now and focus on the rest of the sand area and the water area. And then a bit later, I'm going to go through and show you how to mix up the colours um, to make it the shadow of the rock and to make it look realistic. In this section here I've just grabbed um, a smaller flat brush and I have a lot of water on my brush and a bit of a darker colour and I'm just adding in some more fine details of the movement of the waves. So what I do is I go through and add the detail and then I dry off my brush quite a lot and sort of blend in um, the edges of that detail so that it's not so obvious and standing out. Um, and this just helps to add to that effect of the water moving. That's the ocean section more or less complete. I'm pretty happy with how it's looking. I do have to add some more details up um, towards the horizon line, but I think I'm going to leave that section to a little bit later. And I'm going to move on to doing the rock face now. So I've changed up my palette to a more earthy colour. So I've got my copper, deep rose matter, white, gold and bronze and a little bit of Mars black as well. And I'm just going to um, do the same thing I did with the ocean and block out the sections of the rock face. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just using the predominant, the predominant colour um, of that section and then using that to block out the colour. Um, and then I'll be able to add the detail on top of that. So as I was saying earlier, I wanted the ocean the, to be quite smooth and, and the, the first layer to be quite thin. With the rock faces, I'm quite happy to use a little bit more paint and to start adding a little bit more of that texture. Um, I'm not too concerned if the paint is really um, coming off the canvas um, because it just gives helps to give more texture to the rock face, um, which I think helps to add more depth to the painting. At the top of this rock cliff face here, a lot of greenery and a lot of shrubs just adding in a little layer of the sandy color there in case any of that shines through I don't want to see any white of the canvas um, so I'm just adding that through there and then further back along the rocks I'm just adding in the little parts of rocks you can see amongst the greenery and the cliff faces um, in the distance again this is just sort of blocking out the colors so it's quite rough and not very detailed And then to start adding the underlayers of the greenery, so I'm just mixing up the blue, yellow and the Mars black to create this really dark, um, deep green colour as the base colour. 
for the greenery in the distance I have added a little bit of the titanium white to give it a little bit more of a grey look because it is further away and again this is just blocking out the colours so um, not very detailed um, and I'm not too concerned again with the shrub shrubbery how thick the paint is going on a little bit of texture is good I think so before I continue with the landscape I want to finish off the sky obviously this is further back in the painting so I want to make sure that's nice and finished before I paint the final details of the land um, so I don't want to add heaps of detail to the sky I want to keep it quite simple so that the focus is really on the sea and the cliff faces so I really just want to be adding movement so as you can see here I'm just I've added a little bit more white to my sky color along the horizon line and then just adding sort of wispy wispy clouds through the top so the way I do this is I just in a circular motion sort of adds the tips of the clouds and then I sort of brush through as if that they're moving a little bit again I don't want this to be too detailed so yeah it's really just more about adding a little bit of movement into the sky and so that the focus can be on the lower portion of the painting to add the land that's way off in the distance I just mix up a grey greeny colour it's important to try and get the right colour here because you don't want it to blend too much into the landscape that's in the forefront so what I do here is I just add in that light colour and then I add a few darker textures through it as if they're the shadows of the cliff faces and then I just blur in the edges a little bit with the sky in the background so that it's not too crisp and it does look like it's far away. Now back to the cliff faces and I'm just starting to add in some of the darker textures through here um, and definitely some of the rocks that are at the bottom of the cliff faces. Again this section is quite rough and not too detailed but I sort of go through and add in darker shadows through and then I'll go back through and add in some lighter shadows over the top and really it's just about adding texture and getting the feel of the rocks. Now when I'm adding the textures to the top of the cliff face, I also try and go along the edge of the cliff and make it uh, not look as smooth, make it look a little bit more bumpy, a little bit more realistic. And then when I'm going through the cliff faces in the further back of the painting, it's not so much about adding heaps of detail, just the, the feeling of detail. As you can see I've been adding some texture into the shrubbery and I'm just doing this to start with with my bigger brush um, and adding in those darker colors and then for the further back uh, landscape I'm just using a smaller brush and just dotting that onto the canvas so that you get all the textures of the different um, bristles and then I'm going to go through and um, as you can see add in some of the lighter textures and colors I love building up the shrubbery on our Victorian coastline. We have some amazing greenery. It's very wild and the colours are pretty amazing. I love adding lots of different textures through here and sort of building up that layers to really make like it's jumping out of the canvas to give it that real depth.
to add the real detail to the cliff faces, I now use my teeny tiny brush um, to really start adding in the dark shadows and the lines of the cliff. Again, I do the same process going through adding the shadows and then adding the highlights over the top. This is just a process of adding layers and layers and layers and you can really add some good details with this um, tiny brush. Now here I start experimenting a little bit more with um, an orangey colour because this colour does really come out in the cliff faces we have down here. I start making it really vibrant and then I sort of wash it down with some colours over the top so that it, it's sort of just peeking through and it's not dominant on the cliff faces because I really like the more muted tones um, that I've created through the rest of the cliff face. And when adding details to um, the cliffs that are further back in the piece, it's important to not over detail them, but also you really do want it to look like that they are cliff faces off in the distance. But at some point here, I feel like I've overworked them a little bit, so I actually stop and come back to them a little bit later, letting the paint dry so that I can sort of step back and see where I need to, to fix them up a little bit. But again, it's the same process of adding in the shadows and then coming back through and adding in some highlights. Here I'm adding in a little bit more um, of a copper colour into the shrubs. This is again just to add a little bit more depth and a, a little bit more colour interest here. Um, and then I also go through and add some more highlights as we go, as long as adding some of these shrubs onto the, the rock face towards the edge of the cliffs. Um, at some point here I realised that I have um, over highlighted, so I haven't left enough of the dark areas of the shadows of the shrubs so I do go back through and add some of those darker textures as well to give it some more shadow um, and so I just am adding that in through here and then I go back through and add the highlights again it is important to keep that shadow so that you are adding depth to the painting and you don't um, over highlight Also remember if you're interested in um, looking at the process of how to create the um, cliff faces and the greenery, I do have an, a video on my YouTube channel that uh, goes through the process more slowly and more detailed um, of how to create this. So yeah, check out my channel if you're interested.
So now I'm going to start um, showing you guys how I create the shadow of the cliff face. Um, so I mix up a, a sandy shadowy colour with um, a little bit of the copper, gold, mars black and white to sort of give it that sandy grey colour. As you can see here I also go back and start adding some of the shadows to the sand so when the water rushes in over the sand it does leave a darker sandier colour so I go in and add that add that through to the other sections of the sand and then I lighten up some of the shadow section sort of to mimic that this the um, sand closer to the water is um, is wet so to give it that that feel I then have to go through and darken off some of the cliff face um, that I did earlier so that to carry on that shadow on the cliff face as well and I also add in some of these darker sections and add in, start adding in some of those rocks onto the sand as well. Now when I get to this point I realise that the shadow is just not dark enough or, or grey enough so I actually go through and mix up a darker colour and a little bit more grey to really give that feel of that shadow and just darken that whole area. Um, I think that it makes it a little bit more obvious that that area is in shadow. And then I want to be making sure that I'm uh, also putting in shadow the water section. So I just mix up a slightly darker green than what I'd used earlier and sort of start blending that in through the sand. And then just using my teeny tiny brush, I'm going through and adding in all those rocks and little details and sort of carrying them through the non-shadow to the shadow section just to make a link between those and just to add a little bit more darkness um, to the cliff face. I'm then going to go through and start adding the whitewash, which we haven't added any as of yet. So when I'm carrying the whitewash through the shadow section, all I'm doing is I'm just adding a little bit of a grey tinge to it. So I'm still keeping it quite vibrant, but I'm making it a little bit greyer than the pure white that I'm using for the whitewash that's out of, outside of the shadow. And to create the whitewash, I'm just sort of adding squiggles all the way back. It's more than just lines, so you want to be curling your brush over so that there's some thicker sections um, and some thinner sections of the whitewash. Because we're quite far away, because this is an aerial view, you can't actually see heaps of the shadow of the whitewash, so I'm actually not adding any in. If we were nice and close to the whitewash, um, you definitely need to be adding the shadow um, so that it gives the, the painting more depth. And then we just go through and add the whitewash and the waves uh, further back in the painting. So I'm not adding heaps of waves, just a few, just to give that, that idea of the, the water breaking. And then to create the whitewash back through here, I make sure that there's quite a, a bit of water on my brush so that the acrylic paint is spreading um, quite easily and I use that white water all the way around the edge of the painting so that it looks like the waves are sort of breaking all the way around and also adding a little bit into the sand as well. Now I said earlier that I needed to go back through and just add some texture to the water that was further back in the painting. So all I've done here is I've added a fair bit of water to my brush um, and got that darker colour and I'm just going through, making sure to leave some of the lighter colour so just adding that texture of it through there through an acrylic wash and just going back over and fixing up that horizon line. Now I'm pretty happy with the painting. I'm just going through now and add a, little, a few little highlights here and there just to finish it off. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how it's all looking. It's more just about the final details now and, and making sure everything's looking good. <laughs>